Hi everyone, today in Integrated Math 1, we're going to go over Chapter 12, Lesson 2. Here are the objectives. Make sure you write them down in your notes. Alright, let's go over the Triangle Angle Sum Theorem. So the sum of the measures of the angles of a triangle is 180 degrees. For example, here we have the measure of angle A, which is right here, plus the measure of angle B, plus the measure of angle C, will always equal 180 degrees. That works for any triangles. All triangles add up to be 180 degrees. Then we're talking about the exterior angle theorem. Okay, exterior, remember we're talking about outside. And then we're talking about angles, outside angles. So the measure of the exterior angle of a triangle is equal to the sum of the measures of the two remote interior angles. So here I have my exterior angle, which is angle 1. And my remote interior angles are angle A and angle B. So what we're saying here is that this angle B and this angle A, when you add them up, they're going to equal this angle 1. So the only angle that we're not dealing with is the interior angle of angle C. And that's how you know what your two remote interior angles are because it's not the one next to the exterior angle, in our case, angle 1. It's the one's opposite of it. And when we're talking about a triangle, we're, all, we're only talking about three angles. One we can't use, the other two we must use. All right, then we have triangle angle sum corollaries, which says two acute angles of a right triangle are complementary. For example, if angle C is a right angle, then A and B must be complementary. Remember complementary? Makes a C. You know it's going to add up to be 90 degrees. So we can say the angle, called the measure of angle A, plus the measure of angle B, equals 90 degrees because they are complementary. Next, we know that there can be at most one right or obtuse angle in a triangle. So, for example, if angle L is right or obtuse, then angle J and angle K must be acute angles. All right. So let's try example two. We want to find the measure of each of the numbered angles. So here we have a triangle. And we have a triangle inside a triangle. So we have this huge triangle here. And we have another triangle here and another triangle in here. As you can see, triangle PQR is a right triangle because it has the 90 degrees in here. So what that is saying is that we know the measure of angle PQS plus the angle SQR is equal to PQR. So PQS is 51. So notice I'm just doing substitution here. And I do not know what the measure of SQR is, so I'm going to keep the measure of SQR. And I'm actually going to change it to B2. I'm actually saying the measure of angle 2 is equal to 
the measure of PQR, which we said was 90 degrees. Think about this as a variable that we're going to find. So box it. That means we have to subtract 51 degrees to both sides. The measure of angle 2 is equal to Thirty-nine degrees. All right, so I can say that two is thirty-nine degrees. The next thing I want to find is the measure of angle one here. For this one, what we can say is triangle SQR is equal to The measure of angle SQR plus QRS plus the measure of angle RSQ. Remember when we're talking about angles, I'm talking about in our case the Q. For the first one, that's the angle that we're referencing. So SQR is going to be 39 degrees, because that's what I found it to be. Plus the measure of QRS, QRS. Notice that's 33. The R is the vertex where they meet. So 33 plus the measure of RSQ which is angle one, measure of angle one. And we know this whole triangle SQR must equal 180 degrees. So we have 180, which is equal to 72 degrees, plus the measure of angle one. Box your missing variable, which in our case is the measure of angle one, which means we want to subtract 72 to both sides. When we subtract that, we're going to get 108 degrees is equal to the measure of angle 1. So now I can say that's 108. And there we go.